I'm sure we've all had those pairs of shoes that we've known from the beginning they didn't fit, but we kept them anyway. The other is the requested topic about what uh, my opinion on Carmina Shoemaker is, and I'll get to that towards the end, so definitely stick around. This is really just kind of me sharing my opinion, particularly in response to a post one of the private Facebook groups. This was a newer member kind of sharing some experiences with a pair of Alden uh, leisure hand sewn penny loafers and trying to figure out like what's the right size. He wasn't going into the store. He was having them shipped to him, which with loafers specifically, like it's just a very tough thing if you don't already know your size. In a uh, lower vamp loafer that has a shallow arch and instep combination. And because of that, when your foot that may have a, you know, a kind of like a sunken arch, it's going to like press compress down on that and it's going to just widen that top line and kind of further compound like any loose areas around your heel or around your instep and all of that is going to kind of widen that top line of the loafer creating some of this gapping that we're seeing. Some of the other uh, areas here around the heel obviously there's a pretty significant gap between the heel and his heel so that in and of itself is definitely problematic with the loafer. Your foot's going to be sliding all around and obviously like you're going to be kind of like flying out of these as you wear them or are walking at any, you know, any type of moderate pace, they're going to fall off. Uh, we definitely need to uh, kind of take a look at the next post, which is where he, uh, I believe, got the next size down and let's see what that looked like here. So um, as you can see, like some of the areas have been improved, but but overall, just by reading his, uh, just by reading like his takeaways or his um, opinion on how they fit, there's still a bit of compromises with it and he's not that confident. So this comes into uh, the first piece of advice that I shared, which is like, if you're not confident in the fit from the start, it's not going to change. Wait until you're able to go in person and try on a variety of sizes, widths, styles to really figure out which ones feel better, gather those characteristics, and then make the best choice. Shoes are extremely personal and individual. You shouldn't be like stepping out of the shoes and the test when you're doing this, which is a great point. You shouldn't really try them on while you're sitting down or trying to step out of them. Stand in them, wear them naturally, and see with that does your foot come out or what are the fit experiences? Ultimately, this boils down to like whether or not you feel that they look good and feel that they are comfortable and supportive when you're wearing them. Even getting into made to measure loafers, there's going to be some compromises because just all of the characteristics and just the, the nature of a penny loafer and kind of how that evolution of a made to measure shoe comes together. My two final like words of wisdom here are basically like if you have any question or lack of confidence in the fit when they're brand new, the experience is to just abandon them, move on. They're not going to change. You're not going to uh, all of a sudden realize that, no, you love how they fit. You're ultimately probably going to regret it. How to modify the fit. You can add like tongue pads, heel pads, and all those uh, fitting pads that go like on top of your foot or around your foot. What it's doing is like it's moving your foot further away from the, the leather or further away from the upper. Could cause more problems because it's just like snugging up how your foot feels, but it's not actually like improving the fit at all. The way that I found is best to do that is to actually get a very high quality full leather insole because what that's going to do is it's going to like raise up your foot to actually fill in the excess volume and room of the upper. And by creating that insole, you're not going to lose any of the shape of the upper. You're just going to kind of lift up how high that insole is propping your foot up. Hopefully that makes sense. I've, I've cut my own like custom uh, full leather insoles before. If you're interested in seeing how that process works or how you would be able to do it yourself, let me know and I can try and make a video about it. I don't have a pair of shoes that I need to kind of like cut a loafer for or cut a... Uh, a, uh, an insole for right now, but uh, I can definitely kind of go through the process and share that anyway. 
One sec. This is a full, well, actually it's a half hide of leather that I got from Rocky Mountain Leather Supply. Tools that I needed like knives, scissors, all that kind of stuff was under a hundred bucks. And just think how many insoles this can make. Now onto the topic that most of you are probably interested in, which is my opinion or my experiences with Carmina. It, it, the Carmina thing is kind of tough because it's one of the first brands that I really kind of went all in on and not only like wanted to support, but was extremely thrilled when they kind of showed that excitement in return. I had bought a number of shoes of theirs. I loved the value proposition that they offered, a variety of Horween shell cordovan colors and ready to wear and custom options, great styles, patterns, high quality materials. You were, I was okay accepting the mediocre response times, the mediocre, um, you know, just enthusiasm from them about customer service. I was fine with that at that point. And it's like, well, if you're going to wait six, nine months for a custom order and it's going to show up and just nobody paid attention to boxing it up, it just kind of like sucks the excitement out of you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I get it. You can brush off the shoe. You can make it look fine. I get it just left with a sour taste in your mouth about that pair of shoes. At least I am. They've sold themselves through their own sales into devaluing their own product. And having so many sales just all the time, their ready-to-wear price, their regular retail price, is no longer their regular retail price. It's the sale price. Like I would never pay markup for a custom order with them. You just wait about a month and there's going to be a custom sale. Now what change for me to just like not being interested to me, not even want, wanting to like kind of have that name like on my channel because if it's here, you know, I'm in effect endorsing it. So a as a collaborator and an affiliate of theirs, if they're going to give me a less than ideal, less than enthusiastic experience, like what do I think they're going to give everybody else? Like I'm the one that's out there kind of like promoting their name. And if I'm not having a good experience, what, what, uh, you know, reasons do they have to go out of their way to give somebody else a better experience hopefully that gives you guys the information that you were looking for there's nothing that i'm hiding here so anybody has any questions about any of the shoes that i've gotten how i've gotten them i'm sure i've already told you but if you didn't watch the video that i told you in i will tell you when you ask hopefully anybody that's bought or buying a pair of carmina i hope you guys really enjoy them i hope they turn out fantastic want nothing other than that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.